So I'm Betty Martin. I'm, this is my new friend, Harry Faddis. Or hi, I'm Harry Faddis. I am a life coach and former instructor at the Body Electric School, where I developed the workshop Power, Surrender, and Intimacy called PSI, and also during that time, the three-minute game, which uh, Betty had found out about <laughs> and uh, is, has some enthusiasm for propagating. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested in that thing you just said okay. and would like to discuss that a little more about how did you say it, your ability to receive? Your, your, yes, we were talking about taking turns and how rare it is that people are comfortable taking turns and that you and I both learned that before we came to the three minute game. And I think that's one reason why it was pretty easy and obvious for me right off the bat. Not because there weren't things for me to learn, but because I already knew how to take turns and I had learned that from co-counseling. And the ability to take turns means that when it's my turn, I really get it that it's my turn and I know how to use my turn in ways that are useful to me and satisfying to me. And when it's your turn, I know how to set my own desires aside and be attentive to you. And that is not a really common skill. Um, and so if, if to the degree that I'm uh, afraid to have a turn for me, I'm afraid to receive, basically. I'm afraid to receive your attention. To that degree, I'm going to avoid it. And then how I avoid it is by give, 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 give or by trying to think that we can both do both at once because it sounds more romantic or enlightened or something. But the ability to really take them apart, I've come to appreciate more and more. It's the key to either of them working. If you want to experience what it's like to receive, you have to stop giving, at least for those three minutes, or you don't really know what it's like to receive, and vice versa. So. Um, so the idea from that, or what I've noticed out of that, is that the, my ability to actually give, which means my ability to set aside what I want, is dependent on my ability to receive. So if I don't know what I want, I can't set it aside. If I can't put myself in the middle, I can't take myself out of the middle either. So my ability to give is dependent on, on my ability to receive, both personally and certainly and professionally as well. And you're talking about working with practitioners for sacred intimate training. What, what did you say? Um, you, you, they did not know how to be a good client. Yeah, right. Yeah. And you, you, your, your ability to be a practitioner is limited by your ability to be a client. And yes. your commitment to being a client. And you're in, in the sacred intimate training, your ability to be a good client is, number one, to know what your issue is, yeah. so write it on a card, yeah. this is my issue, to go to your practitioner and say, this is my issue, yeah. and then throw yourself on the mercy <laughs> of the practitioner <laughs> yeah. to do something, yeah. and then after it's over, be grateful. Mm. That's how to be a good client. Yeah. Yeah. And the part about re remembering the issue I might have an issue and I walk in and Logan is my practitioner and my issue goes away and there's something else I want to happen. Mm -hmm. Or I may come to you mm. and my issue was something about standing up for myself mm -hmm. and you're completely intimidating so I think I'm not going to do that with her. <laughs> I'll do something easy and say, oh I'd like to do some breathing. Yeah. That's not being a good client. Oh, right, right. Stick with the issue. Yeah. The issue is the same no matter who the practitioner is. Some practitioners are more triggering, mm -hmm. either in a positive or negative way. Mm -hmm. And they come to you and you're the worst, last person I wanted to see. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. You still have this That's issue. Right. This person has something to offer you. Yeah, yeah. It may not be what you thought was going to be, but there's something that they can offer you. Yes. And one of the complaints I hear a lot is, I am always a giver. I don't know how to receive. So I say, stop right there. Yeah. You are not a giver. When I am a giver, I am grateful and I do not complain about giving. 
If you are complaining about giving, you're doing something else. I don't know yeah. what it is. Yeah. Yeah. You're a martyr or mm -hmm. a slave or mm -hmm. something. Yeah. You're avoiding receiving is what you're doing. There, see? Yeah. And you, how we need training with that. Okay. True. And the three-minute game is a, a, an assistance mm -hmm. in learning how to do that. Yeah. Because you can't, squir you can't squirrel out of your turn to receive. Yes, and you notice on a massage table how people are being touched but can avoid it? Mm -hmm. They can do that by chatting with you? Mm -hmm. Right. About the grocery list? <laughs> yeah. How else? Yeah. Or by letting you do stuff that they didn't really want done. Yes, that's they right. They sort of go along with whatever they think you, what they think that the program is that you think. Yeah. And you can, it's easy to detach mm -hmm. when you're receiving. Sure, sure. So one of the things that came to me from playing the three-minute game, it, and this is the part that I sort of, sort of geek out about, and there's other videos and stuff on this, so I'm not going to do a lot of detail, but when we ask, when we take turns ask each other those questions, and I say, how do you want me to touch you, and how do you want to touch me, that creates four rounds, right? Yes. So... Each of those rounds is a different combination of who's doing and who's it for. I'm doing for you, or I'm doing for me, or I'm being done to for me, or I'm being done to for you. Mm -hmm. And those, each of those four quadrants is an entirely different experience. And also what it taught me is that I, I've come to look at the definition of the word receive differently because of that, because we use it to mean, uh, we can use it to mean I'm receiving a gift, but the gift can take different forms, or we can use it to mean I'm being done to, but if I'm being done to and it's for you, I'm not actually receiving a gift, I'm giving a gift. So I, I, in the way I teach it, I take those two meanings apart, mm -hmm. so that we know what we're talking about when we're when most people say I'm receiving it, they mean I'm being done to. They don't necessarily mean that they realize it's for them. It, it varies. So, so the game uh, taught me that those are different things. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And what are what are some signs that you know that you're receiving? When I'm receiving a gift that's for me, well, gratitude is one. And it touches my heart in a way. Tears will often come. And, um, and I'm putting myself first. I stop thinking about the other person's experience. Um, but yeah, it touches my heart in some way. Yeah. Gratitude. And I think your brain is temporarily bypassed. Mm -hmm. It's not that I'm against thinking, but sometimes it's it's not running the show. If you are receiving a touch mm -hmm. and your brain is telling you something, it's not good or or it's uh, not the best or mm -hmm. uh, it's not your you don't get that information from your brain. You mm -hmm. get it from your body. Mm -hmm. Does that feel good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm if I'm like receiving <clears throat> body work or a massage, that's clearly for me. And um, can, I very often will go into this sort of this trancey state that's really nursing and healing. And it'll go where it wants to go. I, I don't turn on that. And I do that when I just have this kind of body. Yeah. So there are signs that you know that you're receiving, and there are signs that you know that you're truly giving. Yeah, so that, what are the signs for you that you know that you're receiving? Well, where are my, uh, that I'm receiving? Uh -huh. uh, well, I before a massage or any kind of an experience like that, I would have expressed an intention. Yeah. And uh, I don't like to zone out like you. I like to be awake. Mm -hmm. And I like to be stretched and manipulated. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when I feel that the uh, attention is on what I asked for, uh, this is what I wanted. Mm 
-hmm. And I remember I was uh, getting ready for a uh, something with the gay games, and my feet were bothering me, and I had I was competing, and I asked the masseur to massage my feet, and he massaged my feet for about twenty minutes, and then he went on to the rest of my body. And I know that you're, it's his job to make everything one and mm -hmm. everything, but I didn't ask yeah. for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted an hour of feet, mm -hmm. like release my feet. So when I got that, I was conscious that I am just receiving what I ask for, and it's probably going against the mo modality, uh -huh. whatever. Uh, so that's how I know. So, so what did that teach you in that experience? Well, I had to be alert and mm. renegotiate it while it mm. was going on. Mm -hmm. And I had to ask for something that may not be in the... Yeah. I had a masseur uh, while I was doing body electric work. And I went to him and I said, uh, I brought some music and I said, today I am going to be angry. Mm -hmm. I, all I want you to do is keep massaging. Yeah. And I put the tape on and I started and I was screaming at him, don't touch me, leave me alone. Mm -hmm. And he stopped and I said, don't stop. <laughs> it, it's happening right. because you're doing it. <laughs> so that I received that and I received, mm -hmm. I can remember I wanted to cry. Mm -hmm. So I, I took some music and I said, I'm going to cry, don't stop. Yeah. And he just yeah. kept on going and yeah. I could keep crying because he was doing this. Yeah. And I needed that and I asked for that and I received that. Yeah. And it feels yeah. good yeah. to know that. Yeah. Just as it does if you're a giver to know that you've paid attention. Right. You keep your the mind wanders and you call it back. There's no such thing as perfect attention. Mm -hmm. But we yeah. learned mm -hmm. in our modality of co-counseling, mm -hmm. uh, how to practice that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's that's a big piece of knowing when, that, knowing when I'm receiving what's happening when I'm receiving is that I ask for it. And sometimes half the fun is just to keep asking. Do this, oh, now do that, oh yeah, now do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's, so then what happens when that sort of clicks, oh yeah, it's, it's mine, it's coming to me, it's what I asked for, and then what happens? Well, I think what it, for me, one of the most profound things is I'm not alone. Mm. Ugh, yeah. That if I were running it and not asking for what I wanted, it would be like I'm being alone. Yeah. I'm giving, trying to give myself a massage yeah. rather than let somebody else do it. Mm. Yeah. And I don't want to be alone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And so what about when you're giving? How do you know when you're giving? I think in teaching people how to do this, what I've noticed, and I, I, of course, I had to be trained, is that their eyes are not on the prize. They're looking around the room because mm. something more interesting is happening. Yeah. Yeah. Or they don't know how. They don't know the value of this. And the secret is in the wedding invitation. Say more. <laughs> uh, Mr. and Mrs. Betty Martin uh, cordially request <laughs> the honor of your presence is what you're doing when you're a giver. It's true. And it's very simple. Mm -hmm. There's no time for pyrotechnics or mm -hmm. dazzling people with your technique. Mm -hmm. And it's with, are your eyes on me? Mm -hmm. Not anywhere else. Yeah. Can you do that for an hour? Yeah. If you can, then you can be a good practitioner. Yeah. And uh, are, where's your mind? Are you doing the grocery list? Mm -hmm. Probably it's normal. So you have to, we have to learn how to forgive yourself, let it go, and start over. Mm -hmm. But the client doesn't know what's in your mind. Yeah. The client knows what's in your body. So if, you, if I s sense 
he or she is looking around for the oil and there's no hand on me, mm -hmm. this is not good. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's when I went to massage school, they taught us to always have a hand on the body. Right. If you're reaching for something. Don't desert them. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's true, the presence, I, I describe it often as what we actually give when we give is that we, we set aside what we want. That's, that's really a big part of what makes it a gift. And the other thing is that what, what we're giving is our time and our attention. And all the rest of it is just the bonus that right here. I'm yes. With you. Yeah, I'm right here. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah, and you know, and you know, we do PSI with all kinds of costumes and mm -hmm. implements and techniques and yeah. everything. But really, you don't need that. That's right. You could do this on the phone mm -hmm. for half an hour. Mm -hmm. You could have this kind of session, mm -hmm. uh, just like you can for yeah. counseling. Yeah. Yeah. And when you are a giver, and another sign that you are doing it well is when you are checking in periodically with mm -hmm. the person. Mm -hmm. How is it going for you? Mm -hmm. So even in three minutes, if you wanted me to rub your neck, I could say, how is that going for you? Mm -hmm. So then you could say it's too hard or too soft. Or... Right. Yeah. And I thought when I learned this, that we should know this without talking. Checking in is a right. skill I learned. Yes. 